So you can see right along that node, that's where we're getting that root development. Guten yardening, everybody. The cold weather is on its way and we've decided that we want to overwinter some of these sweet potato vines. So today I'm gonna to show you how we're gonna do that and I'm gonna explain just why we're doing it. Well, as usual this year, we are growing quite a few different varieties of sweet potatoes and we want to keep that process going even after the weather changes here in zone five, Wisconsin. You know, sweet potatoes don't like the cold. We've got frost in the next couple of days. So we've got a lot of sweet potatoes to pull up out of the ground here. But on top of that, we have some amazing, well, let's take a look here. I'm just going to show you one of the leaves. We have some amazing vines growing from these different varieties. The leaves are still super healthy and while they're healthy before the frost comes and turns them all black and destroys them we want to come out here and we want to harvest some of these vines. Now when you're growing a vining variety of sweet potatoes the vines are going to get longer and longer and longer. We're going to get a continual growth that is going to be multiple feet long. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this vine off a little ways back. So I've got probably, I would say two, two and a half feet of this vine. And I think this is a really good example of what I'm looking for just in general to show you what it means to overwinter these vines. First of all, you can see there's a flower on here that's just about to blossom. You know, we're talking almost into November at this point and it's still developing, still growing. But as we go back along the stem just a little bit farther, we can start to see, well here you see just a little nub of a root system. I'll turn it sideways. I think you can see it better that way. See that little nub of a root system? And if I go back another node here, then you can start to see the roots developing on here. And basically what we have is, and you can see the, the remains of the soil right here, wherever this vine has come into contact with the soil at a node, we see the formation of a root system. Now, if we had a climate that was warmer than here in zone five, it's highly possible that all of these root systems could eventually turn into fully developed sweet potatoes, but that's never going to happen here because our entire growing season is about 115 to 120 days of warm growing that these sweet potatoes need. And so what we wanna do, instead of wasting all these vines, and yes, the leaves are edible, they taste like spinach, there's no problem eating them, but instead of just wasting these vines, we're gonna take some of these inside and we're going to use these roots to our benefit. Now a baseline value for bringing these in and overwintering them is just their simple beauty. If you take a look at the greens on here, and this is just one variety, I'm gonna show you another variety as well. Here's another variety, take a look Take a look at the greens on here. They're absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful decorative plant. So one thing we could do is pull off the vine here and put them into, let's say a hanging basket or some type of pot that we could just keep them growing for the greenery themselves. Because after we've harvested them, remember, these are going to keep growing and keep developing. They'll push out these root systems. And I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do here in a second. But what that means is basically, we can keep them growing, they'll get a little bit longer, we can cut off the ends, and we can do the exact same process over and over in a cycle. So we'll have these fresh greens, greens that are growing that we could then use to transplant next season, if we wanted to, back into the ground, we'll have them growing for an unlimited amount of time. These are very vigorous growers, so as long as you keep them nice and warm and healthy indoors, you can keep them going for as long as you'd like. All right, let's take a look at how we're planning to overwinter these sweet potatoes. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick some leaves on a stem that are really nice quality, don't have a lot of insect damage or anything like that. And I'm giving myself a pretty good amount of length here. Let's say about 16 inches. It's not necessary to have all of that, but what I'm trying to accomplish here is I want to have at least three or four of these nodes. And when I say nodes, I'm referring to the area where the leaf attaches directly to the stem. So you can see these nodes all the way along here. And again, if you look closely at them, even the ones that haven't really touched the soil, you should be able to see this little dot. It's like a little white dot here. This is where those potential roots exist. This is where if it comes into contact with the soil, it will definitely create those roots. So now what I want to do, I'm going to go down and give myself several of these healthy nodes. So I'm going to go right about here. So what I've got is about a foot long now. And all I want to do is come through and I'm going to cut off 
the leaves right back here. So we're exposing just the stem. So now what I have is the stem and I still have all these healthy leaves. I'm actually gonna go up one more. And what I need is to be able to place several of these nodes into water to allow those roots to develop, just like you would if you were trying to place a tomato plant, for example, a tomato sucker in water to allow the roots to develop. So I'm gonna take this and I've got a clean jar here with some water in it and I'm just gonna place this stem right down in the water. Now I'm doing that immediately, even though the one thing I need to do before I bring this inside is to get some soapy water and get these soaked in there. Now you could also add some vinegar to this if you wanted to, but my purpose here is to get rid of any of the bugs or creatures that might wanna make their way indoors. Because one of the things we wanna do with this is to grow it inside our grow room area because we plan to grow some sweet potatoes over the winter. But if we have insects like, well, our aphids, which came in and gave us a hard time last year, well, then we'll have an additional problem. This isn't going to hurt these at all. All I need to do now, after I've let them wash off for a little bit, uh, is to go ahead and rinse them off. Now, once these have been cleaned off and we've done as good a job as possible to ensure that we're not gonna bring anything along with these back indoors, then these can go right back into that jar of water. Now, if you're wondering what it looks like to cut these off and put them in water, these have actually been in water for about two weeks. These came from the plants from our early sweet potato harvest. And look at the greens on top here, healthy as ever. And again, we haven't even fed them anything. They're just in water. And I'll pull one apart here so you can see right along that node, that's where we're getting that root development. Actually, there are three nodes on this one. All of them were in the water. They all have roots developing out of them. So now we have a ton of options for what we want to do with these over the winter. Now with the roots looking great like this, we can go ahead and pot this if we'd like to and start growing this just for the looks. And that's the first thing that I mentioned. So we could do this in a pot, we could do this in a hanging basket. You could really create some beauty that's going to be long lasting again, because you can continue that process. It's a cycle with these. You can keep them growing basically indefinitely. But there are other reasons why you might want to overwinter your sweet potatoes. First of all, if you're planning to grow them in a future season, you're keeping healthy growth alive. And again, as long as you maintain them, you'll have them ready to go as early as you need them the following growing season. Or if like us, you want to experiment with growing sweet potatoes indoors over the winter, well, this is all we need. We don't have to go through that initial process of taking a sweet potato and developing slips from it. We have sweet potato slips that are ready to go. And that means if we have a place to put them, to experiment with them, we'll have them ready to go right away. This is an easy way for you to overwinter your sweet potatoes, but don't forget that step, that all important step of cleaning them before you bring them inside so you don't bring anything along with them other than some amazing sweet potato potential into your house. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember when you're with us, you are good to grow.